brushes gathered in a vase. Tubes of okra, alizarin, cobalt, lie patiently near a wooden pallet caked with yesterday's creations. Scattered copies dot the room in silhouette. In the corner, rectangles huddle one against the other. An empty chair sits in the middle like a little an empty chair sits like a little H upon a barren stage, preparing for an artful drape and a weight it must endure. Word painting. Soliloquies around an easel. I am a man. I have always been a man, a real man. I think like a man, love like a man, come and go like a man. Yes, piss and fart and burp like a man. Do not ever not call me a real man again. So goes the rant in my active, sometimes radical, usually sweet, also tasteless, can be tactless mind. <laughs> The rant might derive from the side I call Dark Blake, when Blake White is resting, or more often preoccupied with something shiny. <laughs> this is not a personality split, oh no, I am a sane being. It speaks uh, more to a propriety split that comes with such questions to myself as, can I really say this out loud? <laughs> Will it offend or hurt? Won't it just go away if nothing is said? Hi. Hi. I'm Blake Walton. And I'm Annie Morrison. Last year we were privileged to be part of the United Solo Festival in New York City uh, with two selections, uh, both plays written by Annie Morrison. Um, one was Linda Lovely Goes to Broadway and the other was Trevor's Fire. Lin Annie performed Linda Lovely and I performed Trevor's Fire and we were, we were welcomed uh, with open arms to a very warm community of the Solo Festival. They became our family. They did. Okay. <laughs> Both pieces have been published in indie theater now. It was excellent. Um, and we both won awards last year uh, at the closing ceremonies. Annie won the award for the Best Actress. And Blake won the award for Best Premiere. Because of this love and passion we have for solo plays, Blake and I decided to actually form a company called Gotta Van Productions with the idea that perhaps we can actually travel more, uh, go to other cities and other, other countries, presenting soul plays that we create and uh, direct with each other and other people's as well. We will be presenting two new plays at the 2013 United Solo Festival, a new play that Annie wrote called... Word Painting, Soliloquies Around an Easel. And you've written something for yourself, which is called... Leading Men. It's a piece I put together because I had been a model over at the Ringling College of Art Design for about four or five years. And sitting sometimes nude, sometimes draped, my mind is a monkey mind and would go all over the place exploring universes. Excuse me. Yeah, are you the monitor for this class? Ah, okay. Is this a gesture or a long pose? Long. Good. And while I was sitting there, I often would look over out at the students and wonder what was going in the mind of my mother back in 1942 when she was a student at the Chicago Art Institute. And I, I sat down and started writing a monologue about the monkey mind of the model, finding it kind of interesting and fun and comical. And then I wanted to write the perspective of an art student. So I thought, gee, 
what would my mom be thinking in 1942 if I were a model or anyone? And another piece came out, something more arty in the sense that my mother was a modern dancer. She was a poet. She was a lyricist. She was a, a playwright. She designed hats. She designed plate designs. She was a Renaissance woman. Funny, delightful, and delicious, and but full of interesting little mysteries. And as I began to write that piece, it became a dance. It became poetry. The next piece I discovered I wanted to hear, see what the art had to say, and found that very entertaining that most artists avoid that question at all costs. But I got the answer to that by looking at my mom's art and looking through her poetry. And the next thing I knew, I was weaving her poetry, my poetry, to explain a piece of art. I was curious about the mind of the critic, because they're pretty comical in themselves. Um, and we decided to put everybody in a different world, since time is all kind of happening at once, simultaneous moment kind of thing. So I put the model in 2012. I put the art student in 1942, which happened to my mother. I put the art speaking in 2042. And then in 1912, I put the thoughts of a critic. It was an interesting journey. In the process, I learned some very beautiful things about our creative selves and our mysteries and where the clues to the mysteries really are. In the asking of a question, the answer is right there. It has been a beautiful, heartfelt journey for me. And I think it's going to be surprisingly universal. And I was mulling around this rant in my head about um, manhood and uh, what I was hearing daily about what it is to be a man. And so I set out to write this piece about manhood in this society and especially approaching it as a gay man. It became society. a play about fatherhood um, as I told the tale of my relationship with my father, which is a beautiful relationship, um, an evolving relationship, and beautiful because it came from uh, rejection uh, and growing into an incredible acceptance and admiration. The week would come to an end without too much fanfare. There was still so much I wanted to do, clean the house, get stuff organized, Make sure he had food in the fridge. Spend another moment. <laughs> no, I, I didn't know this would be the last time I would see my father. Mother Nature had it in for us. The long drive to the airport would be excited by a ridiculous storm. I mean, the kind that makes itself known. I am in the passenger seat, enjoying the view from the shoulder, watching my life pass before me while rain blasts us from all directions with as much visibility as a car wash. I am now saying the rosary in gibberish and, and believing fully that this is the last day of my life, but ain't it grand and it's with my pappy as it should be? <laughs> After losing a few pounds in sweat and angst, we arrive safe at the departure curb. I know this is the last time. Our goodbye is simple. We both know we have to get on with our lives. But I am cognizant of what is between us. I'm pleased with that. I know who I am. The short, white-haired man behind the steering wheel drives off. And I know I will never see him again. And I realized that I learned about being a father from my absent father. Because I, 
vowed to become the father that I never had. So I became a pretty good father to my son. But then I realized that we all learn from each other. And I, when I started being the wise um, mentor to my father, I looked to my son to get the same kind of wisdom. And I realized our roles become reversed at some point in our lives. We start learning from our children. But, but it also, I mean, the, the play becomes uh, a definition of uh, the three leading men. It's called leading men because it's about the three leading men in my life and my life movie. These are the, it's my father, my son, and myself in my life movie. It's about um, how I learned to lead men, how my father learned to lead men, my son learned to lead men, and um, how we've all played leading men on stage, and theater plays a big part of this. The result of writing this was unexpected. There was a great empowerment for me uh, because I was telling the truth. I learned that in the, in the truth, um, there's no wrong, um, and there is incredible, a kind of forgiveness for things that uh, you think are were wrong in your life or were um, slights or um, or harm or hurt, and um, I became. I realized I was a pretty sane being, that I was really quite healthy um, in my outlook. And um, I get to define manhood. Um, and my great belief and knowledge about what it is to be a man in this society, a real man. We need your support. Last year, we had a magnificent group of people come together to take us all the way the, through the 2012 solo festival in ways we couldn't even imagine. Yeah. Trunks and, and traveling, and then there was Sandy that we Sandy. didn't expect. <laughs> and right. then a nor'easter, which was pretty funny to watch the two of us walk down the street with a truck with a in truck. hand mm -hmm. and the it. snow coming this right. way. Right. But we want you to mostly help us and become our family. Join our family by joining mailing lists that we have. Come see performances anytime Absolutely. we have them, um, especially at the Solo Festival. Um, Your funding this year. would be wonderful. We have okay. a lot to do, and uh, now I got to find the keys to the van. That's right, because your help can help us move Gotta Van Productions forward. forward. Thank you. Thank you. Last year, we were privileged to be part of the 19... <laughs> we, we don't even know what timeline we're in. I hate the third okay. dimension, don't you? This so isn't the fifth dimension. <laughs> oh, we are! Hi. Wait, I'm crying. <laughs> I know, it is... It's, it's a wonderfully emotional project okay. we have to tell you about. Okay, stop it. Okay, stop. Stop. Okay. <laughs> you stop it. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm, Bla I'm Blake Walton. <laughs> and I'm Annie Morrison. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Come see Vote us. for us. <laughs> and, um, give us give lots us money. of money. Because we're hilarious. <laughs> At least we think we are. <laughs> oh, I'm crying again. <laughs> Okay. Okay, mm. wait. Wait. Okay. Do I have to put my makeup back on? No. Okay. Okay.